I'm here at the, one of the temples of highly weird hedonism, the Zoho House, of which I'm a private member for part two of my Dr. Yacoub story. Ironically, my father bears a striking resemblance to the master Fard Muhammad, and we just found out that my father's father was passing, and he grew up in the Paradise Valley, the same place where Master Fard started the Nation of Islam, but I digress. Now, the reason I call this a temple of Hollywood hedonism and its relevance to your idol Jay-Z is I was in there working out this morning, they have a nice gym, and uh, my friend called me, my real friend who I hadn't talked to in a while, and uh, he said, oh, what, we got to hook up, we ain't seen each other. I said, oh, yeah, I'm just working out at the house. And he laughed, he said, oh, you remember that? I'm up there all the time. Now, he's not a member, but he does, I guess, provide uh, white girls with entertainment and not of a romantic nature. Now, uh, I'm gonna direct you to some black owned businesses because I always support black owned businesses. My black owned business owner friends know Doggy Diamonds. I'm gonna put the link, choke no joke. And then you can just Google Desiree Perez. This is no conspiracy theory. I normally don't engage in these types of things. But the fact that some human being went on to my Desiree Perez story because I know the difference between how the artificial intelligence on uh, YouTube works and a human being seeing something and calling in directly to YouTube. So my lawyer will be talking on a Monday. Uh, I used a picture of Jay-Z for two seconds and it gave me a copyright strike, which is in violation because it's fair use, but it's whatever. So uh, Doggy Diamonds has a guy uh, from Harlem who talks extensively, and other people have said this, about seeing Jay-Z with OG Wine in the early 90s uh, on their block in Harlem, where these people say OG Wine was well known for Grande Perico. Uh, OG Wine is purported in the official story, the official bio of Jay-Z to have been introduced to him in 1996 by uh, convicted drug distributor and co-conspirator in Rockefeller Rock Records, Kareem Biggs Burke. Uh, and they went on to found a 4040 club together and OG Wine currently has some position in Rock Nation and uh, Desiree Perez, uh, I guess, runs Rock Nation. Now Desiree Perez was the Hispanic woman from uptown New York, which is I think Ocasio-Cortez is the rep there. It's one of the most democratic uh, political areas in the United States. She was recently pardoned uh, by your, 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 your favorite white supremacist, Donald Trump. Pardoned for something she did in 94. She wasn't in jail. They just took it off her record. So in 1994, she wore wiretaps. I think she was caught with 35 kilos of cocaine. The case she was involved in involved Colombian nationals, Puerto Ricans, I think some of her family members. Now, theoretically, when a person uh, is caught in a crime and confesses, it's because they've recognized the error of their ways. And when they tell on people they snitch, it's because they realize what they did was wrong and let's put a stop to this drug dealing madness. But of course, it's not really how it works. Uh, definitely in a drug game. The way it works is this, selling kilos over here with this one, doing this over here with that one, and I know a few hitmen. And when I get caught, it's just, I decide which one I'm gonna tell on so I can keep going with the others. And in fact, very often, people's biggest drug run comes after they get caught when they on bond or when they work it. That's, that's part of the deal. Oddly enough, Desiree Perez is married to OG Wine. Now, Jay-Z himself purports to have been a major narcotics trafficker. He references 92 kilograms. Well, that's in the same ballpark of 35 kilograms. And these crimes would have been occurring right in that time 
Ah, uh, between the gown doggy diamonds and others talking about Jay-Z actually met OG Wine uh, in prior to Desiree telling and during the time Desiree was telling and then Rockefeller gets founded, I guess, what, 96 or something. Um, so Desiree, you know, since you realize that the destructive force of hard drugs in your community and make no mistake, like, it's one thing to be a drug addict or poverty stricken or not know no better, sell some dope and get you a new car and all that, I, you know, whatever. But like when you're involved in people from different countries bringing in large amounts of drugs and I mean, the rappers used to tell you, well, uh, we black people don't own any planes to bring the drugs in. Well, Desiree Perez and, and her associate Jay-Z, they were bringing it in on planes. They weren't, you know, just the victims of the white man. They were active participants per their own testimony. Uh, interesting that Jay-Z has been pushing for rap lyrics to be not used in criminal cases, which is fairly absurd when, I mean, the Supreme Court has ruled any excited utterance, like you put me in the back of a police car and I blurt out, I killed him because he raped my wife, can be used against me in court. But Jay-Z doesn't want his old lyrics being used against him in court. Though always remember, before you think of him as whatever you think of him as, no tales of drug dealing daring do, he doesn't reach the height of popularity in which he can then affect an interest in Basquiat paintings and present himself as something new. And on the subject of Basquiat, someone like Basquiat uh, would be appalled uh, that if someone who worships in the temple of money like Sean uh, is referencing him. Basquiat's life and work was a refutation in some ways of that uh, aspirational capitalism. In fact, right when he began to get really popular and a lot of his money was coming in, he killed himself uh, by overdosing on heroin. And when you die from sticking a needle in your arm, it's never actually accidental because, I mean, you're always holding death right there is playing Russian roulette. So money made Basquiat wish to die. Money is all Jay-Z, money and power. Quest after, but he name drops Basquiat to appear cultured. And then him and Beyonce shot a video in the Louvre for what? Now, uh, so OG Wine and Jay-Z highly likely knew each other prior to Jay-Z claiming he met him. OG Wine's wife definitely told in a big case, including I think I had some family members. Yet, oddly enough, I don't know if they were married right then or I think they were or together. How, you ain't telling your husband? Well, of course not. In fact, what a perfect setup. My wife's the courier. We can throw these people under here, under the bus, so we can keep going. That's how it works out here. Uh, I was lucky enough in my young 18, 19, dabbling around before I got too heavily mixed up and trying to middleman big eighths and half of bricks. I was going to get a big eighth with my man from Buchanan and 30th, when it was, that's very burned out now, it's in Detroit. Highly active. We pull up and he gets out to go see this guy was outside and he talks to his guy and he runs. Stop it. And that bitch ass shit off. So I was lucky enough to, to, to learn early, 18, 19, when I was dabbling in the, you know, middleman, the big eighth type stuff. My guy was taking me on Buchanan and 30th. Burned out area now in Detroit. Used to be the number streets. It was, I remember we were trying to pull up on one guy and he thought we were chasing him. So they started hanging out the window with the AK-47. So I pulled up next to him. It was like, hey, it's us. Anyways, so my guy gets out and goes up 
to the person we're coming to see, and they talk, and a guy leans in his ear and says something. My guy, who was a dangerous person, comes and gets in the car, and it's like, pull off, pull off, like he's shook. And I was like, oh, what happened? He said the guy leaned into his ear and said, I'm working with the feds, don't fuck with me. So right then I learned, like, that's the drug game is snit, like, that's the informant game, the being under indictment, the telling on this one over here to keep selling over there. That's what it is at a certain level. Like, that's what it is. It's not anything weird or unexpected. So Jay-Z's informant partner, married to a man that many others say was a big Perico dealer. Jay-Z, in these same exact span of years, says he was doing things like being involved in 92 kilogram deals. Uh, and now he wants lyrics to not be used against you, which he purports is for the protection of, I don't know what, the other rappers. I mean, T. Stucky, I did a documentary on him. He's, I've talked to him on the phone. He's close friends with close friends of mine. He's been locked up a long time. Uh, his lyrics were used against him. Get T. Stucky out. Yeah, yeah, Jay. Uh, and, you know, why, why is this relevant? Our drugs are very, like, destructive. I mean, my mother, for example, chose getting high over me. That's why I got no love for these drug addict, prostitute women. They don't deserve none. They don't deserve a second chance, none of that. Now, here's a guy that either lied about being a major drug dealer to have street cred. Because while you regular people don't know the difference and can't tell, like, even when I was doing rap videos in Detroit amongst the rappers, I mean, it was like, oh, they ain't killing nobody. I ain't listening to their music. It's some dark shit in the mean streets of the big city. Uh, so, or he really was that level of drug dealer, which is a lot different than you know, selling a few dimes to your auntie and the next door neighbor. Uh, and I'm gonna leave you with this. If you think, well, I want you to do your own research. You shouldn't be watching people on YouTube, even me, uh, to get answers. I would like for more of you to put a little effort in as my Black teachers used to tell us in Detroit Public Schools, put on your thinking cap, do a little work on your own. Go watch the Doggy Diamonds, look up Desiree Perez, some choke no joke. I mean, and this is a very, this is, requires no convoluted logic. I mean, you know, it's all right there. And then I want you in the end to go uh, listen to No Church in the Wild. What's a guy to a king? What's a king to a non-believer who don't believe in anything? And again, I don't like to get into the same type of stupid conspiracy theory references that most people use just to get attention or because they're ignorant, but certainly 666 is an idea that runs strong, you know, uh, it's anti-authority, which to a group of people brought and their descendants brought to this country as slaves and still not fully integrated into the society. Certainly people that are anti-authority and the idea of fuck the authority is very appealing and I, I'm with that. Uh, but listen to No Church in the Wild, and then I want you to go to the Wikipedia about Aleister Crowley. And uh, just your homework assignment, and uh, enjoy Dr. Yakub, the master fired Muhammad, Alpine.